Yeah, Welcome. we might as well get started. Um, it's uh, four o'clock and um, we have about 20 people signed up, but so far I think there's only maybe, what, eight. So they'll, I'm sure they'll join us. But um, okay. what you're seeing on, on your screen up there, you're seeing Gars, Don Garcia, we call him Gars. And uh, Don is, Gars is at our Denver studio that Mark Samber and I have created with Gars. And uh, we're calling it uh, Livestream Denver. And basically it's a virtual TV studio dedicated to live streaming presentations and webinars. And um, we built a stage and we have it lit right there. Gars is standing on the stage, but we'll, we'll get to that. Anthony's gonna do the intro, so take it away. All right. Hey, thanks National Speakers Association members for joining the workshop with Mark and I. Mark is a true pioneer in video broadcasting and video production in Denver. 30 years ago, he started creating videos for corporations, professional speakers, and large associations. And um, just recently, due to the new reality, he has joined forces with Mark Sanborn to set up a studio in town called Livestream Denver. And today we're just gonna be showing you the three scenarios that you might find yourself in when you're communicating with video in the near future in a pro studio and what its features are and what its advantages are over any other option. And then he'll be helping you set up a home studio so that you can live broadcast directly from your home studio or capture and create videos. Put them up into your video asset library so that you can share them with him. And then I'll be demonstrating a mobile production studio that you can take with you wherever you go and you can set up kind of a confessional booth or you can, you, you can live stream from your smartphone. And, uh, and, and that way you're able to give your end user the best experience. So with that, I'll pass it back to Mark so that he can, uh, he can introduce you to the surprise studio that he's in. Uh, one of the NSA members' home office basement studios right now. So um, we are in Eric Chester's home studio. Eric and I built this over the last couple of years and have been refining it. Um, I'm going to take the camera and turn it around and I'll show you. He's got um, a DSLR camera set up. It's actually a D70. Right now, um, the DSLR cameras that I'm recommending or a, a Fuji and a, uh, I'm sorry, a Nikon and a Canon. So I'll go, I'll get to that. Um, but I'm gonna turn the camera around. I'll show you the setup here. He's got the monitor set up. Um, he's got um, his lights that we, we put together. And, um, but before I do that, I wanna introduce Gars, who's gonna show you a quick virtual, a quick tour of the virtual presentation stage. So for those of you, who may not have the space in your home to do a home studio and need a turnkey op option, that's why Mark Sanborn and I created um, Livestream Denver. And that's where Gars is. And I'm gonna play this little video clip. I'm gonna screen share. I'm gonna show you, it's just a little one minute piece that Mark and I recorded. And, um, Hi, this is Mark Sanborn, and whether you're a professional speaker or an executive, you're in the middle of a digital tsunami. The wave of technology that has been brought onto us by COVID-19 is quite overwhelming. Live meetings have been dramatically changed and at least for the foreseeable future, eliminated. So my guess is you're spending a lot of time on a little screen, whether it's a, a webinar or a digital meeting, whether the platform is GoToMeeting or Zoom. And the problem, of course, is that no matter how good your messaging is, the medium affects the impact. Now, you can continue to use all the free and low price technology that you want. The technology is good. But if you're looking for a competitive advantage that separates you from the competition, makes your message more effective, makes you and your business more successful, I'd like you to check out LivestreamDenver.com. 
My friend Mark Camacho and I have worked together for over 30 years, and we know that right now one of the most important offerings that speakers need is the ability to up their game when they present digitally. As a matter of fact, LivestreamDenver.com has the ability to put you on a digital stage, not just in front of a computer screen. So we hope you'll go to LivestreamDenver.com, check out what we can do for you, and then schedule a time for a consultation. We'll help you surf the digital tsunami. Okay, it looks like um, I might have shared the wrong screen. Um, I might play that again. But Garce is at the Livestream Denver studio. So Garce, why don't you take it and tell us what Mark Sanborn and I and you have created and um, show us around. All right. Hey, uh, you know, you guys are professional speakers. I'm a little nervous. I'm an engineer by, by education and by trade. So if I screw up, please forgive me. Um, what we've done is we've taken a normal studio and created it into a, the virtual studio that you see. Um, we can uh, go ahead. We've got multiple cameras here. They're all broadcast TV, TV cameras. So you've got a stage that you can walk around on, present just like you normally would. You've got a screen back there. Uh, you can change and do uh, your PowerPoints. And it would be just exactly like you'd be doing uh, a live presentation anywhere. And it looks just like you would be doing a presentation at a, at a live event, at a live event. Um, if you want, we can even pipe in the, the, the crowd noise. Um, and, you know, with a third camera, I can look right at it and you've got a, you've got a third camera that again, you can then gesture to, to it. Uh, we can change the background out to, to match whatever you'd like to have. Um, we've got uh, a green screen capability. So if you want to key something out and you want to be in Hawaii, we can do, we can do that for you. Um, just about anything that you want um, on there. Um, we integrate it uh, in, into it with a switcher, as you can see. But the best, thing, the best part about it is, is that with the switcher, um, we can integrate your slides into it so that it looks seamless. It would look exactly like you'd see on an iMag uh, at presentation any, uh, at any uh, event that you'd ha have. Bring it in via Zoom. We can incorporate that with any Zoom call so that you could do two-way conversations with people. Uh, you can present and get uh, instantaneous feedback, WebEx, go to meeting. Uh, we also have several broadcast formats that we can go and keep it in the, truly in the broadcast world and, and maintain the quality of, of the, the, the picture quality. So say you're here and you know, back in Indiana, uh, they're allowing uh, crowds to come back in and you've got to, you're talking to a group back in Indiana who, who may have, you know, um, 100 or 200 people in an auditorium. We can give them broadcast from here, give them the broadcast quality back there. So it would be just exactly like you're doing here. Um, so um, that's basically that's basically it. Um, like I said, you're, you're able to walk around. I promised Mark I won't fall off the stage. I did that earlier today. Uh, we had, um, but that's my uh, ability to not uh, not to walk. So um, that's so basically what, it. So what Garz is showing, yeah. So what Garz is showing us is he's showing us a three camera cut. Mark Sanborn just joined in. Mark, you, if you want to uh, chime in. Um, Garz, cut back to the single shot. Cut back okay. to your primary shot. There you go. So that's the primary shot. So we've, we've lit it and, and of course we can light it different ways and stage it in different ways. But the idea is that you can't really tell it's a small studio space. Once you're on that primary camera, it looks as if the background just kind of goes into the distance. And um, you know, the idea is that um, you're able to d deliver your content from a, a, a virtual stage that the viewer can't really tell how the size of the room. So hey, Mark, it just gives the viewer a sense. Mark, I'll, yeah. ch I'll chime in for just a minute or two because you guys are doing a great job, but I'm glad I was able to get off my other call and join. Uh, you may have already Thanks, said Mark. this, but the, the whole premise of uh, Livestream Denver is it's for speakers who want to perform, not produce. Uh, I was doing a lot of deep research into becoming really digitally savvy. And what I found out is, is the learning curve I was capable of, and certainly the uh, equipment investment was within my budget. But 
I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to have a competitive advantage where I could get the attention of a meeting planner uh, or uh, a corporate client uh, or a bureau and say, you know what, everybody's doing digital presentations, but this is a cut above. So if, if you really want to, you know, create your own studio, Mark can help you do that. But if you just want to really focus on your craft, that's really the reason that uh, Livestream Denver was created. The other thing, to, uh, Mark, that we haven't done, that we didn't do with you, but we, we have the capabilities here, is uh, we also have uh, prompters. So if you want to do something, you know, if you've got some notes that you want specific, you know, they can go up on a prompter or you can put your PowerPoint up so you're looking at it uh, like you'd have a confidence monitor as well. So um, we're here to help you make you the, the, the stars that you are. So, so with that, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to show you, I'm going to, let me, in fact, I'm going to share a couple slides and uh, you guys tell me if you're seeing my slide deck, if you're seeing my presenter view. Okay. Hi, this is Mark Sanborn. And whether you're a professional speaker or an executive, you're in the middle of a digital tsunami. The wave of technology that has been brought onto us by COVID-19 is quite overwhelming. Live meetings have been dramatically changed and at least for the foreseeable future, eliminated. So my guess is you're spending a lot of time on a little screen, whether it's a, a webinar or a digital meeting, whether the platform is GoToMeeting or Zoom. And the problem, of course, is that no matter how good your messaging is, the medium affects the impact. Now, you can continue to use all the free and low price technology that you want. The technology is good. But if you're looking for a competitive advantage that separates you from the competition, makes your message more effective, makes you and your business more successful, I'd like you to check out LivestreamDenver.com. My friend Mark Camacho and I have worked together for over 30 years, and we know that right now one of the most important offerings that speakers need is the ability to up their game when they present digitally. As a matter of fact, LivestreamDenver.com has the ability to put you on a digital stage, not just in front of a computer screen. So we hope you'll go to LivestreamDenver.com, check out what we can do for you, and then schedule a time for a consultation. We'll help you surf the digital tsunami. These are just some images that we took. We're going to now get into Eric Chester's home studio. Eric and I had built this, like I said, over the last couple of years. We've been perfecting it. Um, this image is taken from um, his space. He's got the monitor over his shoulder. The background is a brick wallpaper. Uh, he actually found it online. It's a um, three-dimensional wallpaper. So it's flat. It just looks three-dimensional. It's called video wallpaper. And he put it up on his back wall. Um, we got him some lights. Um, in fact, I'll just do this. Well, let me go through the slides and I'm gonna move the camera. Here is just a little piece that he recorded. This is our world at the beginning of 2020. And this is our world now. To survive and thrive in the new normal, you're gonna to have to stop doing some things and start doing others. So that's, he's using a wireless mic and he's recording on a DSLR D70. So it's a, a small, uh, you know, a still video camera. Uh, you can buy now the D80 and the D90 for anywhere in eight, $900 range. It's got a flip out screen so you can turn it around and you can actually see yourself so you can position yourself. Um, he's got a monitor offset, which I'll show you. Um, this is a home studio that um, I have back in Carlsbad, California, um, using, this is not a DSLR camera, but it's the same concept, um, camera, tripod, going into what's called an encoder, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, it's a little device, it's like $300, and it allows the camera to feed into the computer, which then feeds into Zoom or GoToMeeting or any of those platforms. Um, the camera I'm talking about is in that picture right there behind her. Um, the particular cameras that I like, um, besides the 
what Eric's using that he had had that for a while. So right now the best cameras on the market for this purpose is a Canon DSLR SL3. And it retails for around $600. And the reason I like it is because it has um, an audio jack so you can plug in a wireless mic rather than just having the camera mic on the camera because um, some of those cameras don't have an external jack. Um, it's a full frame sensor so it has a really nice look and then it just gives you a better quality image than a traditional cheaper home video camera. So it's a still camera but it, it has a great video look. Um, these are just some images from that particular setup. I'm going to stop share and I'm going to show you Eric's room. And uh, here we go. So here's where I'm at. So if you just. Okay, so up here is the backlight. This is um, about a hundred and twenty dollar backlight and this particular backlight is an LED panel and that's particularly handy to light the back of the subject and that's very important because in this particular case if you can see there's the green screen up there and Eric what he had done which we had suggested is he put it on he put it on this roller so if I pull this he just rolls this roller right down I'm not going to roll it because it's kind of there it is and he's automatically ready to shoot green screen it covers up the monitor and um, that's good that's about enough and so that's his setup we turn the monitor off and these light the lights that we use we use these particular umbrella lights so he just turns these lights on. He's got one there. He's got one there that's basically turned off. The umbrella lights light up the backdrop. And then if I turn this camera around, there's his DSLR camera. I'm gonna open up the iris here so I can see what I'm doing. So that DSLR camera, the D70, it's sitting on a teleprompter platform. Eric happens to use his iPad and he has a voice activated software that when he speaks, and this is our, we're gonna get into this next week in our next session on uh, teleprompters and green screen and lighting. But this is voice activated, so when he speaks, it just starts to roll. And you see that monitor there. I've got that monitor plugged into the back of his camera so if he's not streaming live, because there's only one output on the side of these cameras, that output goes to the computer to stream live. But if you're not streaming live, if you're just recording you know, weekly content, then we plug that camera into that monitor and then he's got basically a set monitor so he can adjust his look. It's not really necessary because this camera has the flip out screen right here. And you can turn it around so you can see it. Uh, the camera's turned off right now. For his case, you can't, you can't really see that flip out screen because the teleprompter's in the way. Uh, and then of course, he's got a key light. So basically it's a three point lighting system. Key light, backlight, and in this case, um, and actually, in this case, that umbrella light over there is what I call a fill light, and that fills the background. That's basically your, your setup. Key light, backlight, fill light. Fill, the fill light fills the background. Um, and that's, you know, in the case of this kind of setup. So he's actually raising that screen. So it's a pretty, pretty slick setup that he's got. And um, I'm gonna go back into my shot here. And then he's got a wireless mic. I'm wearing my wireless mic, but he's got a wireless mic that's a um, mini, uh, mini phone jack that goes right to the side of the camera. Let me turn, that, I'm gonna turn the gain down on his camera. So.
that's essentially, in a nutshell, the home studio. Um, we, we were gonna do Q and A, but you know, if you wanna jump in now, um, before we get to Anthony, and he's, Anthony's gonna introduce us to the portable concept. Maybe, you know, if, you, if there's some Q and A we wanna do now, maybe we should do that. I have um, a question. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering if you've seen the setup that Ruby has. She actually posted it on Facebook and was sharing her setup. It was multiple monitors, lighting. I have no idea since this is new to me. I'm just wondering if you've seen it and if you can comment. Because that is very different than yeah. what you're showing us. Well, I haven't seen it. it it's possible that, that that's a green screen behind her. But if it's not, if it's her set, um, you know, a lot of computers, my Mac has, um, has four display cards. So you can have four monitors plugged into one computer. Uh, so it depends on your computer of how many display cards you have. The one we're using right now has two display cards. So what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the monitor right here mm -hmm. with you guys. And then of course the monitor behind me. So I'm using one computer with two display cards. So it depends on what she has for a computer or if she's just literally, maybe it's a green screen background. I'm wondering um, what the advantage to having multiple monitors. I mean, she literally has three or four. Um, it's kind of cool, you know, it depends on, I know she has a pretty extensive slide deck. Um, I know, I, I know, I don't really know the advantage. Okay. Um, it's just a good look, you know, maybe one monitor has the show logo or it has her logo or the client's logo and another monitor has her slide deck. Um, and then her third monitor, if she's on Zoom, then that's her uh, Zoom monitor that she's looking at privately. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Thanks. Um, I don't know. Feedback, is, is it a complex setup? Is it a simple setup? Um, Eric's setup is set so he can go green screen or standard presentation style. Um, comments? Mark, I have a question. Yeah. Um, what, at the live stream studio, how confident are you guys, based on what you've done so far, that it will that the bandwidth is good and that it will stream to the customer without interruptions? Because that's everybody's nightmare, of course, is that it goes down during the middle of your keynote. Guards can answer that. Well, we have got a very large pipeline here. We do a lot of network news out of here. We've been doing this kind of thing for the networks for uh, the eight years that I've been that uh, the studio has been open. So a lot of times you'll see uh, the governor coming out of Denver um, or some, somebody from ESPN wanting to do an interview. And so we go ahead and do a broadcast for them. So we have a very large pipeline um, and actually have a fiber hookup so that in case someone wanted that quality, we can, we can go with that quality. Um, but basically we've got uh, 30 megs, dedicated 30 megs up for any broad, any any uh, broadcast, Zoom takes about uh, three dedicated. So if you um, look at that, uh, most people can do Zoom on, their, on the internet that they have. The problem is, is that when the kids get home and they get on the internet with their, with their iPads or, or something like that, uh, it goes, you know, it, it drops down. The other thing that we'll do is uh, we'll hardwire the feeds. But right now you're, you're not seeing any dropouts and the picture quality is great. And I'm just on Wi-Fi here in the, stu in the studio right now, so. Got it, yeah. I think I'm seeing a little bit of a lag between the audio feed, which feel, seems real time, and the video right now seems a little lag, but I don't know if that's on my end or somewhere along No, I, I see that too, because I had the same question, Jim. Uh, that, could be, that, that could be the encoder that I'm, that I'm, using, right, that I'm using right now to, to get us in. Uh, it's a function of, the, of Zoom. Um, we can clean that up. And, and have zero latency if we if we need to on that. Right. So it uh, unfortunately we're pumping a lot of a lot of material uh, into the into Zoom. So um, it is something that 
it's a function of Zoom. Uh, I, my recommendation is to use GoToMeeting. It's a, a little better platform. If you've got a, if you can recommend that to your, to your folks to go to, to go to that, uh, that would be your, would be your best bet. But audio takes less bandwidth, uh, than does the, the, uh, than does the, um, video. So sometimes that, ha that happens. Uh, we call it lip flap in the business. Got it. Thank you. Here's some additional slides. Um, these are the lights that um, I've been recommending for home studio. These are more uh, LED flat, flat uh, panel lights. Um, that's the Canon SL3 that I mentioned. That's the flip out screen so you can see your shot. And this is the Nikon D5600. These are the two that pretty much work in terms of um, having connectivity and having a, a really nice image look. Mark? And that's the, uh, that's the encoder. It's just a little box. It's about a $300 box. That hey, Mark? You to, um, yeah. Mark, are you on Eric's regular stream because I don't know for anybody else, but you're actually lagging for me from Eric's studio. Is anybody else seeing that or is my internet slow? No, I see it. I see it as well. Yeah. So what, how do you fix that? Because, you know, that's not cool. Uh, that unfortunately, that is, that, uh, unfortunately, that is a function of uh, the internet and a function of Zoom, of Zoom and the technology that's that's out that's out there. I mean, you know, Mark Mark put it uh, bluntly and said, you know, uh, the free the free stuff that's out there it works it works pretty well, but it, it you know will never replace live because there are going to be technical glitches. You'd have to have everyone would have to be um, on a high speed uh, platform. And uh, it, things have to be perfect for the internet. I mean, you see it, you can see this, the lip flap that you're talking about um, on the networks now, you know, when they do, when they do their, their Zoom calls and their, and their stuff. And they're getting around it by using other, other methods of encoders. Mark showed you an encoder that is, uh, you know, that is used uh, quite a bit um, on that. But it's, it, you know, no one expected, where we're at today uh, for everybody to jump in and be, uh, be ready to go with this type of technology. We're embracing it. It's only going to get better. It's just not perfect quite yet. It's, it's, it's coming. So it's a function of your connectivity wherever you are, basically. It's a function of, you've got, you've got three different connectivities, Mark. You've got the connectivity of the room that's, that's broadcasting out. You've got the connectivity of, the person that's re that's re that's receiving it in the in the, the downlink, and there is lag there is lag time. Some of the stuff, and we've seen it before uh, with you know Facebook. Facebook is had had to put uh, some parameters on their on their Facebook Live because people were taking advantage and showing stuff that shouldn't be done, shown live, and so they had to they had to put a delay in. And so some of this is still is it's still being worked out. Uh, you know, two months ago when we went into COVID, this whole situation. You know, Zoom was, everything was fine. And then they realized that they could be hacked and people could break in on the conferences. This is stuff that is, you know, everybody's moving at a, at a rapid pace to get it better. Um, and it will come out to be better. It's just going to be a matter of time. It's just going to be a matter of time. And, you know, and as broadband gets better, um, you know, we're going to see, start to see better, better quality uh, at home. But I mean, think about it. Even if you, if you rent a movie from Netflix, I, you know, I've got, high speed internet at the house, you know, hundred megs down and I still get, and I still get uh, breakup on, on my Netflix and on my Comcast on demand movies. So it's, you know, it's not perfect yet. I'm, uh, while you've been talking, I've been sharing some of the slides from Livestream Denver. We have um, essentially a webinar look, which is in this case, Mark sitting in front of the monitor, kind of a CNN style look. Garth does this for network uplinks. 
So it's um, time for Anthony to step in and then we'll do uh, Q&A for everything that we've shown you so far. So Anthony, why don't you tell us about Mobile Studio? Sure. Well, uh, I thought that Carolyn had a great question. And so I thought I would chime in with my smartphone to see how that connectivity worked. And that would help me to start talking about a mobile connection. Hmm, I can see you're trying to let me in, but it's not letting you. There, there, well. It keeps rejecting it, huh? It kicks off. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, I tried, <laughs> Carolyn. And I'm seeing a, li and Anthony, I'm seeing a little bit of lip flap with you. Are you? Um, yeah, just, uh, it's probably two or three frames off. Okay. And I'm, but, and I'm not sure if I'm seeing the mobile or I guess I'm seeing your computer because you're looking straight at the computer, right? Yes. And I'm actually using a webcam and it's a, a Microsoft HD. Mm, uh, I can't really show it to you because I'm using it for my camera. But yeah, it's an external one because my onboard MacBook Air webcam was having technical difficulties that I couldn't resolve. So that was a little $45 solution. But, um, you know, my discovery in my own business and my career was mobile video. And I wondered if you would have time for a six minute presentation for a six minute story. Is that okay? That's okay. Okay. Thanks. This is me in 2007. I was a general contractor and my parents gave me this flip cam for Christmas. I don't know if you can see it. This is it right here. But it was the first time you could record HD camera in your hand. And I was, I was figuring out what could I say? Cause I didn't, I wasn't comfortable on video yet. I was just a contractor. Uh, before that, I was in corporate sales, but I had broken out on my own and I was a g licensed general contractor and it was right before the big crash. But, uh, you know, I was trying to figure out how I could balance project management and sales at the same time. So I took this video, I looked at the lens like it was my customer and I said, follow me. Took that video, published it to YouTube and in the next week, I had just garnered um, a prospect who invited me over to his kitchen to give him a quote. I ended up selling that $50,000 kitchen and that huge light bulb went off in my head that I needed to record more video. And at the time, you know, I just had this flip cam and I wasn't going to take my subcontractor off the job to point it at me so that I could get better on video. I just needed something to hold it still. And then uh, I, I realized that you know, I tried to find something that would mount it for me. And all these suction cups and swivel balances, nothing worked. And, uh, and that's when I worked on it well enough that I could make this up. So if you go to the mobilestudiostick.com, you can see it. It's a lot like other mobile studio sticks. And, you know, you can pick whatever one you want. You don't need to pick the one that I created. Uh, this is the first one. It's just a clamp and a smartphone mount. And, you know, that was all I needed at the time. I put it on the ladder and I pointed it at myself. And then I realized I needed a better audio solution. I needed to hear my voice a little bit better. So I got this, you know, really inexpensive microphone that just clips to my lapel. It's got a four ring eighth inch audio Write that down, eighth inch audio. And if you've got an Apple phone, then all you need is this little adapter that plugs into your Apple phone and then accepts that eighth inch audio. But the nice thing about this microphone is that there's no batteries. It's always gonna work. It's always reliable. You don't really have to test it and wait for the batteries to burn out or recharge the batteries or anything. So uh, just a wired lavalier microphone is a great solution. And then I discovered that I did need to, to bring the camera lens up to eye level sometimes. So I got this extension 
monopost that went onto the clamp. And the full solution looks like this. It has lasted the test of time. I've sold about 350 of them after my presentations and people say that they just love it. They uh, don't find a, a, a room or a place in their life where they don't have a table, a desk, or a chair that they can clamp this to. And it breaks down uh, you know, into a nice bag that holds everything in it. Uh, if you find yourself without any natural light, which I have now, then I do include a small light that you can use. It's got three light settings. And then you never have an excuse not to make a video. How many times have you found yourself in a situation where you thought, ah, oh, I should make a video about that? That's a really good point to express visually. And you just were like, oh, I don't know how to create it. Well, now you can just whip out your smartphone, record that piece, upload it into your Google Drive, which is now your asset library that you can share with Mark or uh, myself or anyone who you've uh, procured to help you produce a video. And there are certainly smartphone video editing options that I'll be going into next week to show you how to stitch those little video clips together really easily so that you can, you know, just uh, communicate with video more often, have a, a higher level frequency, more ease, faster. And there's certainly a time and place for professional and for mobile. Uh, I think every brand has room to pull their viewer behind the screens, show them what it's really like to get into the trenches, to the trenches. And um, that when I go to video advertising and video marketing conferences, some of the biggest speakers on the biggest stages are telling me that when it comes to advertising on video, in social media, sometimes those smartphone videos sell more or get more engagement with the viewer. It's just uh, maybe more of a reality type uh, visual as compared to, you know, a synthetic visual like the Pro uh, Studio, which, you know, doesn't take away any value from it. There's certainly a time with, like Mark Sanborn says, where you want to demonstrate a different brand and smartphone is not the highest level brand you can project. So, there's a time and a place for it, and, and I encourage you just to use it more. You don't have to publish everything you record, but uh, the more you record, the better you get. So that's my presentation. Thanks for listening. Okay, so let's go into some, yeah, let's go into some Q&A. Yeah, I have a Go ahead, Dean. Yeah. Okay. Um, one, it's interesting, right? Like, look at the technology challenges we're having on this call. I think it's the fear that we all have, that this is the direction things are going, but we're, there's so many complexities and challenges with technology, and this is just an example of how we experience that, that we all have to work through. Um, and thanks for what you guys have shared. I wanna make sure the expectations for what this web, what, what, what we're getting out of the next couple of weeks, um, that we're aligned. I, I mean, it's great to learn about the mobile, and it's great to learn about the, 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 the live stream, because that is a resource that I could potentially use, so I'm grateful for that. But I know for me, uh, my expectation is more of the, the home studio setup, and I just wanna make sure that, um, are we able to kind of talk through what those elements are? There's lighting, there's camera, there's backdrops, there's these kind of areas, and then what those elements are, because my hope is, is that I can say, I already have some stuff, by the way, but I'm, you know, what do I need to add to get this set up? And I just want to make sure that that's where we're going, that we're, that's what we're going to get out of this yeah. webinar. And that's great. And so that, let's do that right now. So, so we've developed this, what we call a pro home studio kit. And um, I recommend the DSLR cameras. But what, what's the, re the reality is, is that you probably already have a collection of things. So the idea is that I would like to know what kind of equipment you have, and then I'd like to guide you to, to either getting the right equipment or using what you have and just arranging it in a way that works for you. For me, I, I like the DSLR for the look of it, and I like the opportunity to get into the computer using the encoder. Um, I like the wireless mic setup. I like the lighting. 
uh, the light LED panels. Um, the back of the panels have little rheostat, so you can adjust the color and the intensity of the light. I definitely like the backlight. So for, for home video purposes, and I'll get into that next week, um, you either have the presentation style set up like Eric has here, or you have the green screen set up like I showed you pulling down his screen. And then I wanna show you more of his teleprompter and how he does his um, voice activated teleprompter. So he does everything by himself. I come here once in a while and help him out, but he can do anything here by himself. In addition to, um, he's, he's editing on um, Final Cut Pro. Not everybody has Final Cut, but you can edit on iMovie. Um, so you tell me where you're at and let's help you get to where you need to be. So you tell me like where you're at with your equipment, um, in terms of your space, in terms of your lighting. Um, obviously, windows and natural light play a big part in the look that you can create. Down here, um, Eric, this is his walkout level. He's got windows, but he's um, blacked them all out with black shades. So that way when he lights it, really he just turns on the lights. I've, I've got him all set up. He just has to flip a switch and he's got green screen lighting or he's got presentation delivery lighting. Um, but all his windows are blacked out. And the reason is because that's natural light coming in and these are tungsten lights and the, the color starts to get mixed up and uh, plus you can't really control the amount of light level that comes and goes because the clouds come and the, the, you know, and then you've got bright spots. And so um, you tell me what you're struggling with and you tell me what equipment you have and let me guide you that way. Yeah, and I don't want to make it just about me unless it's going to help everybody. But I think when you mentioned a, a pro, would you say a, we have a pro? pro A pro home video kit. Yeah, I mean, I, what are the elements? Is that something you guys have? Like, you know, here's the list of the things and here's the items. Because I think for all of us on the call, it'd be beneficial to say, well, we already have that. I don't want to invest the extra money in that. But, oh, I don't have that. I mean, I'm happy to share a little bit of what I have if we think everyone would benefit. Yeah, I think that uh, um, the well, best thing to do, I think the best thing to do, Mark, would be to have everybody, you know, that wants uh, their, uh, you know, help with this would be to uh, write what you have down and one or two questions that you have and let it and send it to us uh, beforehand. And then, you know, next week, you know, we can come back and report on it and, and be specific and we can be specific about it for somebody's uh, individual space and obviously if it's if you've got a situation it's probably going to be the same for for other people in in the group so you know we can we can do that that way i mean one of the things that mark talked about was was uh natural light versus you know studio lights and the biggest thing is is that with natural light coming in in the morning it's one thing in the afternoon it's another um you know it can obviously change during the during the the your your presentation and you don't want to do that. The biggest thing is, is that, um, is making sure that, uh, that it's consistent so that the camera doesn't go dark and light and bright and, start and so on and so forth. Cause that, that is something that's disturbing to the viewer. So, um, you know, we've, uh, you know, not to, to, to tag on to what Mark has got. Um, I've got about 30 years of broadcast engineering experience. So, and I've built several, large TV studios. So, you know, we can help you out in any way you want, you know, as far as, you know, yeah, your, your lights are going to be fine, but here, why don't you just get some 89 cent diffusion and put it over the front of it? You know, uh, you know, oh, you, you want to spend a little less money, go get some, uh, go get some uh, parchment paper from, you know, that you cook with and throw that over and that'll, that'll help soften out the lights so that you've got a, a softer look on it to help out your cameras. So, you know, um, there's a lot, we have a lot of experience on the team and uh, that's what we're here to help you out with. So, you know, whatever way we can, whatever way we can do it. Um, but to, to try to talk off the hip is not, is not fair to, you know, to uh, anybody because that's just not the, you know, the way it is, you know, it'd be a lot easier to answer specific questions. So, uh, and everybody does have gear. I mean, hell, you can use a GoPro. Uh, and a GoPro camera is a pretty good, you know, is, is a pretty decent picture as well. So um, 
we can work we can work around that. Mark uses that little that little uh, mini recorder for uh, to for, to encode, um, and that is uh, that's really good. But that's that goes into an Apple product because it comes out with Thunderbolt. Um, I've got one I can show you next week. Um, it's a USB, so it can go work with an Apple or it can work with a PC. So if you've got that kind of situation, we've got that. And it, they're, they're, the encoders run about three hundred dollars, but it gives you the flexibility to work with any camera that that you want, that you want. So um, those are the kind yeah, of things that, happened, we, that we can discuss. Yeah. The encoder, which you see here, it takes the HDMI from the camera and most cameras will have HDMI out and it'll go into computer, like he said, either uh, Thunderbolt or USB. And it, um, that's where you go into um, Zoom with that um, encoder device. So it's very possible you have a camera already that would work beyond a typical um, little, you know, computer. Um, yeah, I have a Canon webinar. camera that looks like it might be similar to what Chester has. Is the purpose of that en yeah. encoder, that's basically going from the camera to the computer? Yes. That's correct. The, you can go that's straight. Correct. 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 Yes. correct. Okay. Yeah. So, that, so this one you're seeing takes HDMI from your camera. And then it spits out um, on the other end. There's a you can't see it, but the other end of it has a a fire. Uh, sorry, a thunderbolt. But the other ones that are for PC have a um, USB three. Okay. And so when you're like in Zoom and you click on video camera in the settings, it'll it'll show up as an option, just like it is just as if it were a webcam, and it has sound with it. So that way you don't have to worry about plugging sound into your computer, camera, you know, it's, it's, it's all coming through the camera into your computer on, on one cable. And um, I know like, yeah, go ahead. Do you notice I have a newer Mac, so it doesn't have any of the ports except the one type. So you have to have adapters. Yeah. Have you noticed that the, additional adapters are creating lag time or creating just not even connecting sometimes. Um, I, haven't, yes. I haven't seen that. You have, Garz, go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it, uh, you're, ab you're absolutely right. Um, and what happens is, is that uh, Apple is notorious for dropping something in, in the, you're talking about the USC, USB-C, uh, um, port and uh, what happens is is that we try to work with older gear with older gear and when we plug it in it's even though it's somewhat compatible it's not as compatible as the new as the newer stuff so it's looking for speeds that that the device that you're plugging into may not may not have um, you can get around that a little bit um, by uh, utilizing the the encoder uh, that I have, or and Mark Mark's Thunderbolt is uh, encoder works pretty well, but the problem is is that you've got to get a Thunderbolt to C uh, adapter, and those are tough to get. Whereas a, a USB uh, three to C is a is a a little easier to get from a from a standpoint of the adapters that it would take, but it's a pain in the butt. There's no two ways about it. And what I would get if, if I were you is um, they have a little, um, uh, it's basically what we call a DA, it's a distribution amp. And what you do is you plug that into USB-C and the other end actually gets powered into the wall. And then you can plug in as many devices as you want. You can plug in anywhere from, uh, they've got them from three to seven, seven slots um, in there. And then the one that I got from my wife um, also has a, you know, a, a, an SD card slot. So you can put an SD card in if you want to drop down pictures from your camera or something to that effect. So if you get one of those and it's, it's a little power adapter, it's going to help a ton on what you're, what you're having issues with. Um, and, but there is going to be just that ever so much latency with that. And there's no way to get around that. That's, that's unfortunately, that's so Apple. Will you be on the call next week? Uh, if I'm invited. <laughs> I'm just wondering if you would be able to show those various adapters and the um, encoder yes. that you 
I, I'm, I'm joking, but yes, I can, I can have those. I can have those for you. <laughs> Fabulous. Hey, Mark, can I, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Okay. A couple questions. First, I'm not a Mac person. I know you've given me a hard time about that before. Tough. I'm a PC person. So okay. um, I use my PC. I'm not, am I lagging you guys? No. So I'm not lagging. That's I'm true. using my internet, my Comcast, and I'm not lagging, and I'm on a PC. And by the way, I have four USB ports and an HDMI, so I just want to share that. Now, that's first. Amen, sister. Go hey. Intel. Oh, there you go. go. PC. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> next, next. I would love to use a teleprompter, right, for, for recording stuff, not for, pres not for live presentations that I'm going to do. At least I don't need that yet. Can you guys recommend the teleprompter software? Maybe Anthony, you can address this and how to use it with the webcam that's plugged into my computer or my web computer, what it, my computer camera, to do um, teleprompter work from my home studio. Other question is, I see that when you set up a studio, it's pretty much stagnant. It's pretty much stationary. Like I'm guessing, Mark, that Eric always shoots in that space. I have no interest in that. I want to shoot in my other living room. I want to shoot upstairs. I want to shoot downstairs. What kind of equipment can we use, lighting, et cetera, that will work in different locations? Because I don't want to be stuck in my home, home office, you know, with, with my little foldable thing, which I've never used before and probably won't ever use again, but I was just trying it out for, for this call. So those are my questions about this. Thank you, and I love you all. Can I take that one, Mark? Uh, yeah, well, you, you asked about how to be portable. Um, um, can, can, I, can I answer that, Mark? Kinda, that's your deal. Um, Anthony? First off, uh, yeah, you you have li very little lag, but you you get a little bit of hum from your PC, which is okay. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to be PC versus Apple. They all work the same, uh, in my opinion. Um, as far as being mobile, if you keep the if you keep the parameters that Mark uh, will teach you or myself will teach you, you can go anywhere you want um, and do that. Uh, the principles are are the same. You're happy, we're happy to help you show, show you, where you where each part of your room, each part of your, your house you set up. If you want to shoot outside, it's fine. You just have to keep the, the principles of, of camera the same. Um, as far as, um, you know, anything else goes, uh, yeah, that's what we're here to help you, here to help you out with. But, um, yeah, PC, it works, it works real well. As far as the prompter goes, Okay, uh, do you have a surface? Do you have a, an iPad? Stars? Do you have uh, another stars? device other than your computer? I, I can get one. Um, because Garth, let me, hey, Garth, let me show yeah. you guys what Eric does. I've got it right here. I just recorded it um, just because. Um, here, let, I'm just going to show you. It's just a little piece I want to share. Um, and I've got a response to these questions too. These as pets. Okay. Funny, a year ago, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a miniature yeah, see, donkey. This, this now through the ages, donkeys have earned the label as active. beasts of burden. And they are perhaps the most misunderstood and they're certainly the most abused animal in all of nature. Okay, anyway. These as um, pets. Funny. It a year ago, on his I didn't voice. even know there yeah. was such a thing as a uh, miniature donkey. Now, through the ages, donkeys have earned the label as... I've got four um, minutes left I, I on the workshop. You. Okay, I, I can send you... Um, I just don't remember the name of it. I'll have to ask him again. Um, Q, Q prompt, I, forget, I think I forgot. But... Um, I, I wouldn't pay, for, a little I wouldn't pay for Q prompt. You can, get prompt. you can get prompter software for, for next to no money. It's literally in there and they all work. Um, we use, a, I use Enprompt and I think the, the free version will work very well for most, for most applications. And if you need to go, if you need to, to go to the pro version, it's about a $39 application. Um, and that works extremely well with both uh, um, any of the, I, uh, any of the Apple products. I'm, and I, and if you want, I will, 
test it out over the next week on my wife's surface and see if it works on on uh, on Android platforms. But I'm sure it does. So Anthony, why don't you jump in and then wrap it up? Okay, sure. I've got three minutes. That should work just fine. Um, to address Carolyn's question about the teleprompter, what was the other one, Carolyn? Mobile, being mobile. Being mobile, right. To different areas and stuff. Right. Okay. I don't know if you'll like my answer on this, but I think as professional, you know, Nasher's National Speakers Association speakers, we should take it upon ourselves to produce the best product. To, to put that at the highest priority. And I don't know about you, but I can tell when somebody's using the teleprompter and it's not as engaging as a speaker who's just speaking to the listener. So no matter how long your script is, the magic of video lets us deliver a script and then stitch in the next piece of script that comes after the first sentence that we wanted to deliver. So there's no reason for a teleprompter and that's free. And it's 12 pages long and they want you to read it. You've got to use a teleprompter. There's no, but you know, that's only I, I, I debate you. I debate you, Carolyn. You okay. can memorize 30 seconds of material and then put it down and memorize the next piece and deliver the next piece. It's possible. It might take longer or not. There's AI that edits video like that. Anyways, uh, mobile. Yeah, so we, we gotta yeah, go works. ahead and then wrap it up. This does work and the natural sun provides lots of great light. If you're handy with the settings in your smartphone, especially the newer ones, there's some really good settings on there that helps you get great quality footage. So thanks for joining us for this showcase of the professional, the home, and the mobile studio. Uh, I hope you'll join us next week when we talk about the application of it, how to actually use it, um, how to publish videos so that people watch them. And um, Mark's gonna be talking about those green screen applications. Um, the types of looks that he gets with the screens there in the backdrop or uh, with obviously projecting slides, the transitions, the animations, the types of text overlays that can be used to create the visual that you wanna create. And I'm gonna show you an easy smartphone video editing tool that you can use to just stitch together those little clips that you record on the fly, wherever you are in the world. And then, you know, one last thing, the, the last week, the third week, um, Carolyn Rose, um, yep. to your point, I'm actually going to um, show various speakers be besides Eric's place. Um, I'm going to show other people doing what they're doing. Some of the people that I've helped set up over the years. Um, Dave Avern has a really nice setup now that he's perfected. And I have some other people that I'll show you so that you can actually see different, you know, different people with their various applications in their home studio. It's five o'clock. Right. Somewhere. <laughs> thank you guys well, that's all. appreciate it yeah thank yeah. you and, uh, thank you thank for joining you for having me folks bye right. okay thanks oh, again mark okay. okay good to see you say hi to that lovely beautiful woman you showed us yeah um, tell her my natural color model. is my natural color is uh, brown and silver according to my children oh oh well <laughs> That's the new normal. There's a lot of that going on. Yeah. <laughs> Back at work. Thanks, Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Bye. Yeah. Bye hey, Jim. And Jim, Jim Davidson, thank you. You're my buddy. Thank you for tuning in. You bet. Thanks for the information, you guys. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah. Bye, Bye. Carol. Thank you.